the Range Rover Sport's been around since 2005. It's had several facelifts along the way before being replaced altogether in 2014. The model I'm in today is a 2012 3 litre SDV6. So it has a twin turbo diesel, which produces about 255 horsepower. But because they've been around for so long, you can now pick up early examples for about eight grand, which is a bargain when you consider they were about 60 grand when they were new. But would that be a reckless thing to do? Are you gonna have to sell a kidney just to keep it on the road? Well, I've had loads of used Range Rovers over the years and I've never had anything major go wrong, really. You can buy a 2005 or 2006 uh, TDV6 for about £8,000. Um, if, if your budget would stretch, I would recommend the 3.6 TDV8, which produces an extra 100 horsepower and the miles per gallon stays about the same. So if your budget can stretch to about £15,000, you can pick up a 2010 TDV6, which is a three litre unit, which produces about 240 horsepower. And it's the newer model, so you get, well, the interior is much better than the old one. You get reversing camera, you get keyless entry, keyless go. It just, the interior does feel more luxurious than the, the early ones. And if you can stretch to about 20 grand, then you'll get a SDV6, which is the car that I'm in right now, which has the eight speed automatic, which I'm not a fan of. In fact, I think it's the worst thing about this car. It constantly changes up to improve fuel economy, which is pretty good actually. It's, it averages about 28 miles per gallon. So if you're looking for one, you need to make sure that it's had its cam bolt and water pump replaced. If it's done about 100,000 miles, I'd recommend having the gearbox serviced, because it only costs about 150 quid. It just extends the life of the gearbox, so it's not gonna cost you two grand for a replacement box when that fails. The air suspension, if that goes, it's usually just the pump that fails. You can buy reconditioned ones on eBay even for about 300 quid. ride is a bit crashy. It's not firm that it's uncomfortable, but when you go over a bump it just crashes around. Nowhere near as bad as an X5, but still, it's not as good as the, uh, the full-size Range Rover. They're just a nice place to be. The cabin's nice, the later ones especially. I've got the piano black trim, I've got the leather dashboard, you've got sat-nav reverse camera, play music through the Bluetooth, which is good. They cost about £100 to fill up and it'll do about 400 miles from that tank. Unless you're watching this in Kuwait or Texas, I wouldn't bother with the petrol because they do about 12 miles per gallon and it would just annoy you. As nice as they sound and as quick as they are, that 12 mpg will get hold quickly. I can't think of what else you could get for that sort of money. You could buy an X5 or a Q7. The X5, the ride's too firm, the steering's too heavy, they have gearbox issues, engine issues. You could buy a Q7, but they're hideously ugly. They look like an A8 that's been in a vice. I've had Q7s with timing chain issues, with air suspension issues. So, although Range Rovers do have a bad reputation for reliability, they're really no worse than any of the rivals. I think the ride's a bit, a bit crashy on the sport. Every time you go over a pothole, it's sort of, the whole car shakes. That's true of every Range Rover Sport I've had. I 
could sit here and rip this car to pieces, I could tell you how the key is falling to pieces after only five years. I could tell you how the interior trim sound or feel the best quality. But that would be missing the point a little bit because you do forgive this car some of its fault because of what it is. Because it just has more character, I think, more, more soul than any of its rivals. If you live in the UK, then the road tax is £550 a year, which is the highest bracket. And so is everything that's this size. If you want a Q7 or an X5, they're exactly the same. So, And you can pay it monthly, which is about the same price as my gym membership. And I definitely use this more than my gym membership. Just do your homework a bit first and make sure that it's got the service records and it's been looked after. Do a HPI check on it, make sure it's not been stolen, make sure it's not been in an accident. It only costs 20 quid. And if you're nervous, if you're not really into cars, then get a pre-purchase inspection. The RAC and AA do it for about 100 quid. But remember, you are paying them to find faults, so don't be put off by the back of the list as long as you're armed. Just as long as it's nothing serious, and still have a go at it. So if you want one of these cars and you've got about 10,000 pounds to spend, I would recommend getting one because it will put a smile on your face. They're not quick, they can be unreliable, but they just make you feel special. And you jump in it, and you just, it just makes you feel successful even if you're not. I can't think of any other 10 grand car that would have that same effect. So the sun is about to set, so I think I'll call it a night. But yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I've got plenty more videos to come.